Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Reinhard von Hennix, and I'm very excited to greet you this morning to, for our community award. It is my honor and great pleasure to welcome you to the 23rd Mayor's International Community Awards. My name is Reinhard von Hennix, and I'm the chairman of the Charlotte International Cabinet. We are happy that each and everybody of you joined us and the mayor's office for this virtual session of MICA. I would like to take now the opportunity to introduce our hosts, the Honorable Vile Isles, Mayor of Charlotte, as well as our Master of Ceremonies, Sherman Say. Sherman, I think the floor is all yours. Thank you, Reinhardt. I'm so excited we are hosting MICA this year. Even though, even though we are not meeting in person, but at least we can gather virtually international companies and individuals for investing in our community. Good to see you, Mayor. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Sherman. Um, it is really hard that we're not together. I look and think about this, the evenings that we have and all the joy that's in the room. So we're gonna have to just create a platform that for joy today, as we have the chance for friends around the globe to celebrate with us. If you're joining from outside Charlotte, we'd like to know where you are from. So put it in the chat room so that we can see how globally connected we all are. So I'm excited. I know Sherman's excited. I am very excited and happy about today's winners. We have actually waited for more than a year to hear about the inspiring contributions to the success of our city. And many of our today's awardees pivoted not only their businesses, but also their community giving in the face of the pandemic. You know, the stories that we have today are truly inspiring. People have survived, they've thrived, and they've helped their neighbors and their colleagues do so. And so we're really delighted that we've drawn quite a distinguished audience to join in recognizing their great work. Well, let's not forget to thank the Charlotte International Cabinet, which founded these awards. Thank you to the current and past members for advising the city of important issues facing the international community. Mayor, are you ready to start virtually passing out awards? Well, before I do that, I want to recognize a few people in our audience today. I believe that we have Minister Consulate Nicolette Williams from the Jamaican industry joining us today. And I just want to say a very special welcome from Charlotte to Miss Williams. I also want to recognize and welcome the members of the North Carolina Consular Corporation who are here. Again, welcome from Charlotte. And then there are a few of my colleagues, the elected officials that have been able to join us. I believe Council Member Greg Phipps has joined us virtually. Council Member Larkin Eggleston has joined us virtually. And then I know that many of the others who are going to be able to come make perhaps a little bit later, but will enjoy the opportunity to see this show um, and are committed to the global nature of what this city should be to welcome um, everyone and include everyone and make sure that diversity in our community is respected and well kept. And that's Mayor Pro Tem Julie Eisel, Council Member Braxton Winston, Council Member Dimple Ashmira, Council Member Graham. Malcolm Graham, Councilwoman Victoria Watlington, and Renee Johnson, and Councilmember Matt Newton and Ed Driggs. Thank you very much. I believe Councilmember Bakari is going to plan to join us later today. Thank you to all of the Charlotte City Council for the time that they devote to the efforts to make sure that Charlotte as an international community thrives. All right, we will begin with awards given to foreign owned companies who have corp corporations in Charlotte. The categories are based upon the number of employees each company has in our area and the local philanthropic efforts. First up, we are going to call forward this year's winner in the small business category. This 
Italian cabinetry component maker is growing with sustainability in mind as Salice and America expands in Charlotte, they will lower their carbon footprint with a new solar power system. Their care for the community also extends to the local organizations like Hanby Children's Hospital and the Humane Society. Accepting the award for Le Chiche America is Matteo Fergosi. Please turn on your microphone, Matteo, to tell us more about your commitment to our community. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And on behalf of Salice America, I'm extremely honored for being recognized today. Salice takes great pride in giving back to the community, specifically to the city of Charlotte that welcomed us over 30 years ago with open arms. We are we are famous for our philanthropic work in the community, and we hope with, with that to be better in the lives of both people and animals with support each year. I'd like to, thanks, uh, to thank our partner in, uh, in our efforts, and especially the Casa della Cultura Italiana, that throughout the years has taken part with us in numerous events, including roundtable discussion regarding the importance of technology in the furniture and cabinet industry, where we belong, as well as innovation in both machinery and design. We, Salice, is currently the host for the Casa della Cultura Italian Weekend School for Children. The focus is on bringing children closer to the Italian language and culture through narration, reading, and writing. And believe me, in these times, having some schooling is, is pretty important for the kids. And a big thank you as well to the Humane Society of Charlotte for allowing us to be part of this remarkable organization. We realize that animal welfare is unfortunately not recognized all the time on corporate entities, and we want to make a difference in doing so. We, take, we support them in any way that we can, and especially on their new capital campaign to finance the new animal resource centers and, and much more to come. I invite all, the, uh, all people here to check them out and see what they're doing for the animals and the community in Charlotte and the cities around them. The, our team has also worked, like uh, Mr. Sherman was saying, with the Hamby Children's Hospital, providing financial and toy donation, ensuring that remarkable care is possible for all children in the Charlotte area, as well as the American Cancer Society. And with that, I'd like to thank you, Madam Mayor, and the International Business Relationship Committee, and congratulate all the winners in each category. Thank you. Green. So let's take those emotions and make sure that everybody has the opportunity to see. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Today's medium foreign owned business owner winner is committed to helping future leaders make it in Charlotte. Dasso Systems is engaging with several partners, including the Cedar Charlotte, to expand the Manufacturing Day event an event focused on showcasing the possibilities of STEM careers to high school students. And with this French company's establishment of La Fondation, they are also bringing 3D technology directly to classrooms with their Living Heart Project, a virtual model of the human heart used to diagnose and pre-plan heart surgeries. Accepting the award for Dasho Systems is Regina Davis. So it sounds like your company truly has a heart, no pun intended. Yes, that pun was very much intended, that your company has a heart for helping students explore STEM. So please tell us more. Well, thank you. Thank you, Lyles, and I want to thank everyone <laughs> for this honor. I do want to show the award for those who are watching. Um, well, community engagement is not just a privilege, but it's an honor for us. And to be able to provide value to the community in which we provide our service is very key for DSO Systems. I'm from our Manufacturing Day event in which we were able to host over 200 students and expose them to the possibilities in STEM going beyond their current education, um, to volunteering at places like Shining Hope Farms, sponsoring programs around the city of Charlotte, and even to adopting the roads around our workplace 
where we um, pick up the trash and keep it beautified. Um, we want to create and participate in the experiences um, that solve real world problems. So I do want to thank you for acknowledging our heart towards the community. And we look forward to continued support um, within um, Charlotte and the surround. So thank you so much. Now we want to say thank you again. And we want to congratulate Deso Systems. I want you to, again, let's see how many fun emojis that we can put on to say to them, for their contribution to this global community. Thank you. Thank you, congratulations. Our final foreign-owned business award is in the large business category. This British fresh food company called Charlotte Home for both a production site and the North American headquarters. Bagavor USA is dedicated to sharing the bounty with our community from STEM coaching programs with the UNC Charlotte students to making sure none of the products go to waste through a second harvest donation program. Begovor USA works very hard to help in the community. Accepting the award for Bacacor USA is Adeline Martinez. Adeline, please tell us more about taking part in the Harris Teeter Veterans Day of Service initiative to support the members of our military. Adeline, thank you so much for being a part of our community. We welcome you. Good morning. Um, thank you. Bacabor is extremely honored to have been selected to receive the Majors International Community Awards. We are earnestly grateful to the Major and the City of Charlotte for the recognition we have received. Bacabor is a UK food manufacturer specializing in fresh prepared foods. We entered the Charlotte market in 2015 and uh, we made um, Charlotte one of uh, our production sites as well as our corporate headquarters. It, it, we support several uh, charities um, across the UK and uh, continue our efforts here in the Charlotte Mecklenburg community, supporting organizations like uh, Second Harvest Foods. Uh, we aim to support the communities in, in which we work, uh, giving opportunities to support um, the causes and projects that are important to our people. Um, we have uh, work uh, providing platform and access for promising students in STEM fields. Uh, we have partnered with UNC Charlotte senior engineering students on projects to give them real world experience and to provide professional development. And also um, we understand um, the major sacrifices that military uh, members and their families uh, make and the impact those sacrifices have on the community. And that's why we partner in the Harris Theater Veterans Day Service Initiative to show support uh, for military service members and their family members. We will continue our efforts to help the communities in which we work and look forward uh, to bringing more positive changes for many years to come. Uh, we're humbled and appreciative. Uh, we congratulate all other winners and uh, thanks again to the major and the city for this award. Adeline, thank you so much. Whenever I hear the word headquarters, that makes me very happy as mayor. But more importantly, the attention that you're paying to um, the members of our community, the residents that we have around the issues of food and, and, and the ability to be able to have food and supporting those institutions. We want to say thank you. Please continue your good work and join us in congratulating Bacavor USA. Emojis, please. Thank you. <laughs> well, it is wonderful to see corporations from all over the world come to Charlotte and bring the compassions to the community. This year, we wanted to take a moment to show you how a global perspective not only benefits Charlotte through creating jobs and thoughtful philanthropy, but it also benefits our plans for the future. You know, many of our city employees come from abroad and bring their unique perspectives with them. 
However, we don't often get the chance to hear how a personal story can shape their approach to managing Charlotte's growth and while cultivating our unique local culture. I know it is first my pleasure to invite Taiwo Jayeyoba to share his story with you. But I also want to say, I want to say thank you for being an assistant city manager, a planning director, and a friend to this community, a man with integrity and values and the caringness to want our community to be better. So I would like to invite Ty to share his story with you today. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for the kind introduction, Mayor Lyles. Happy to be here. I, I just would like to share my story with you briefly and my journey through a beautiful country um, over the last 26 years that I have been uh, a citizen of this great country. So if you will go to the next slide for me. Um, pretty much, uh, I, I don't tell my story a lot without talking about my parents, uh, my dad and my mom. Um, grew up in Nigeria, but when I was a kid, I traveled through the United States as well because my dad went to school here. He's no longer with us, but he's the one who actually introduced me to the world of planning and made sure that I went to school to study uh, my master's degree in urban and regional planning. Uh, but I'd like to also talk to you about my siblings on the next slide. So I grew up with um, these rascals here and um, was born and raised in Nigeria, but then lived in Southern Africa. Uh, for a, a part of my life and then from Southern Africa came to the United States. That's me in the, with the head in a little bit of a circle there. Uh, my, my brother still lives in Southern Africa. My two sisters, one a doctor, one an attorney, uh, both live in Canada. My brother is a university professor, so I always say that I'm the least educated of all my siblings. Uh, but that's one thing about immigrants. It's really the education, especially when you come from where I come from. Your parents want to make sure that even if they don't have money, you get to go to school uh, because that can inform you and expand your world. Um, let's go to the next slide. But I first came to the United States in 1996 and my journey started in New Jersey. And I stayed in New Jersey for about a month uh, before I moved to California. So you can see those dots there. I've lived in five different states, and that's typical for a lot of immigrants as well. Uh, I moved from New Jersey to Sacramento, and I, tra I traveled by train. So public transit has always been a major part of my life. Two and a half days to uh, Sacramento, 11 states. Uh, traveling through this beautiful country by train was just amazing. Then I left California to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I helped to plan the first bus rapid transit uh, in, in that uh, city, and then moved to Georgia, and then, of course, here in Charlotte, North Carolina. But I'll tell you a little bit about um, immigrants and why we've always, our past and our experiences often shape where we live and where we go and the type of work we do and where we work. So the next slide really captures um, all of this in terms of my experience. When I first moved to Sacramento back in 1996, it was very important for me to live next to a transit station because we were a one car family. And it was also important for us to live in a town home because we know that was what we could afford. Uh, at that particular point in time. But where we lived was also very, very culturally um, diverse in terms of proximity. There were immigrants from Eastern Europe. There were immigrants from Southeast Asia. Yes, we did not speak the same uh, languages, but we were immigrants by connection. And so it was very important to be able to share bus rides with them or even share uh, vegetables like strawberries and they have fresh farms. Um, and it was easy for me to get to work because again, we were a one vehicle household. I would go from my townhouse into a bus line and then from the bus to the transit station that took me to work and did that for many years. And that has kind of affected how I uh, I have done everything that I have done, even though now that I am in Charlotte, I don't live in the city proper, but at least three days a week, I make sure that I drive to the nearest rail station or bus station uh, to, to get to work uh, because transit is really part of um, my makeup. And when you go to immigrant communities, you find that where you have a higher you know, attraction for immigrants, trans transit ridership also goes up. But also is housing affordability because where a lot of us are coming from, understanding that, you know, even when you may not be able to afford your own place, you could live with family. 
But we do know that that is that, 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 that dynamic is very different in the United States. And so you tend to want to go where you can actually afford uh, a place to live because it does allow you to save a whole lot and being able to send your kids to school and being able to provide for them. I started by saying education is very important. My parents um, made sure that even though we did not have a lot of money growing up, even though my dad was a university professor, but you know, academicians don't make a whole lot of money. Apologies to any academician on this call. But education was very important because he always drove it into our hearts that that will empower you to be able to influence your world and do anything that you really want to do. So it's still very important to us today. Uh, this morning, I've walked two kids to the bus stop because it's very important for them to learn how to use this, uh, even get into their respective schools. But so is inclusivity uh, and, and diversity. I like to be and live and walk in a place where people look like me preferably where they also understand where I am coming from. And that is the same thing that any immigrant will go through. And the last slide is essentially, I like to talk about the story of, of, of why I, I love being in Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte has about 60% uh, population of, yeah, that you can go to that last slide. And that's the last slide, actually. Charlotte has about 60% in terms of um, uh, people of color, including about 17% of that being immigrants. One of the reasons Charlotte was attractive to me was coming here. Um, I, I found a number of Nigerians who are medical professionals, but who are also people who were able to guide me uh, into being, uh, to become comfortable in the city. Having an opportunity to work in the city uh, and at the city of Charlotte has given me a whole lot of being able to provide the whole layer of public transit, because not only am I talking about it professionally, have used it all my life, I'm talking about housing, I've lived in a condo, I've lived in townhomes, I've lived in a duplex, I've lived in all of these different housing products, even in single family homes. I do understand how important it is also that immigrants have access to education. So when I'm talking about a lot of these things, not just from an academic point of view, but also from my experience, both as an immigrant, uh, in the United States, uh, who has been here for 26 years, but also as someone who grew up with this background. So once again, I'm happy to be here today, and I definitely will be happy to mingle with us uh, during the networking uh, session, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that we may have. Thank you very much once again for inviting me to Michael. First, for sharing your story. Um, many of us recognize from your slides that the idea of this country is around the idea of having people participate in this democracy with a small d. It's not always about um, you know, what systems and, and projects are in place. It's actually believing in the idea that people can live in a place and be comfortable in their lifestyle. It's really important. So your story is one that we value. Now, I know many of you know that we that Ty is working on the 2040 comprehensive plan for our city. And I would encourage you to think about what he said. And I think Alexis is going to send a link that will be an idea that you'll be able to understand and see what our comprehensive plan is about. Because I do believe our comprehensive plan focus is to look for the next 10 to 20 years for how we continue to grow. And we continue to grow with the diversity of immigrants, as well as those who are living here and born here now. So thank you, Ty. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you. you. There really are so many great personal stories that shape what we do at the city and in our community as well. That is why these awards were created. Now for this portion of MICA, we focus on individuals who shaped Charlotte's reputation as a city of international importance. We begin with an award which embodies the wisdom, leadership, and forethought of Mayor Richard Beanroot. The Richard Beanroot International Achievement Award recognizes individuals who possess a record of outstanding service to the greater Charlotte community in their global pursuits. This year, we are honoring two young men for their work setting up from pothole to citizenship. Well, as mayor, let me welcome these two young men, William and Foster Harris. As they turn on their cameras, they unmute. 
I too want you to know that these twins are going to receive this beautiful award as a result of this recognition. Now the twins have gone off to separate colleges, but we're happy to have them here today to tell us how they were inspired to help the city of Charlotte with their project, which makes them the winners today of this achievement award. Who's going first, Foster or William? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, uh, Mayor Lyles, uh, Ms. Gordon, and members of the Charlotte International Cabinet, uh, we want to thank you for this award and for organizing this event. Naturally, Charlotte was shaped by the community that we are celebrating tonight, and so we want to recognize our collaborators in the room. So first, I want to thank uh, Ms. Prado. She was my sophomore year Spanish teacher, and you know she shared her journey of becoming a U.S. citizen with me, and she allowed us to learn from her. Uh, Ms. Prado, you inspired me to get involved and engage in this community, and you really are the impetus for Naturalized Charlotte's existence today. Uh, thank you to Mr. Lin, who's the Director of International Studies at Country Day, uh, for providing us with unceasing support. You joke that you were just our taxi driver from nonprofit to nonprofit, but we know that that's simply just your modesty talking. Uh, a big thank you to Emily Yaffe for putting the city's support behind this project. Your faith in two high school students is something that we will always be grateful for. Uh, thank you to our nonprofit mentors from Running Works, Meredith Delari and Matthew Elliott, who taught us so much to their example. And lastly, thank you to the dozen nonprofits and government agencies and community organizations that partnered with us to inaugurate the Natural Life Charlotte Group. We were so inspired by the countless stories we heard when we did site visits to each one of them and their experiences and expertise built the Naturally Charlotte website just as much as we did. Finally, we would like to use this opportunity to highlight just a few of the ways that new Americans strengthened Mecklenburg County, contributing $16 billion to the county's GDP, holding 3.7 billion in spending power, and creating or preserving 7,000 local manufacturing jobs. And of course, such numbers can't begin to capture the qualitative impact of those woven into the social fabric of our community. To support those new residents who are making, making our communities stronger and their aspirations to become citizens, we encourage you to visit naturallycharlotte.org slash volunteering to discover a nonprofit partner in our city whose volunteer opportunities match your talents and interests. Together, we can build a city that befits our national motto, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. Foster and William, first, I really appreciate that you thought, thanked your teachers um, and the people that helped you with this because we need to do that more. But I want to say one day I hope that you will expand after college all of the knowledge that you've learned and continue to bring that back home. Let's not go anywhere else. Just come back to Charlotte and continue doing this good work. Please let us all congratulate Foster and William Harris for the impact that they are making. Emoji, emoji, emoji. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations again. Our next award celebrates the vision and determination of those striving to achieve the American dream of building your own business. The Charlotte International Cabinet, or CIC, International Entrepreneur Award, is given to people become U.S. citizens, settle in Charlotte, and build their businesses from the ground up. Now, this year's winner is serving up a taste of island life here in Charlotte. We all know that your taste buds would be thankful if you eat at one of his restaurants. But this Jamaican-born restaurant owner has a heart of as warm as his curry. So let's have Ben Roy Reed join us on the screen so he can tell us more about how he also established Youth Hope International, a nonprofit that trains and empowers young people with vocational skills. So let us go ahead. I know I want to hear from Ben Roy Hello. Reed and please. Ah, oh, he's got company on the screen. You have to introduce your guests. <laughs> this is Mama, the foundation. <laughs> and I, I just want to say it's a great pleasure, Mayor Violais, um, to honor me this way. It's been a long road, but it's a determination, and it's the love for 
my city of Charlotte and the love of all the folks them that live here and the support of my family, my friends, and the folks that come here at Mama's while we're here. And so I just want to say for all the folks them from Jamaica, we did it, all right? <laughs> You know, and as I, as I always says, you know, you always should strive to um, accomplish the impossible because there lies the opportunity and the solution to a lot of the problems that ails us. I came to this city um, some 27 years ago and I see myself as a part of this community and I wanted to um, get involved. And I also wanted to share my culture share where I'm coming from and make certain that the next generation have a, a place here in the city that is respected and, it, and, and is sought after. And, you know, so Youth Hope International, my radio shows, Mama's Caribbean Grill, uh, my construction company, all this is all about building community, but also to highlight that it take one person with one vision, but it take all of us to make it happen. And I, I thank everyone for your support and today we make it happen charlotte we make it happen jamaica we make it happen world and i'm saying yes 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 to all the folks them that supported me over the years and my loving mama here yes 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 be blessed 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 i want to say first thank you um because you made Benroy who he is today I also, Venro, I want you to know that there are many international cabinet members that are in the chat room talking about how wonderful you are as, as you accept this recognition. And Minister Councillor Williams, thank you for your kind remarks about um, Venroy as well. So, you know, one day sooner after this pandemic, I was kind of in a better place. I hope that I'll be over to the restaurant and I'm gonna look for both of you as we go there. Thank you for doing what you've done. And we're so proud to recognize you with this award. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Ben Roy. All right. All right. <laughs> Our final award is the Global Leader Award, which goes to those who embody the spirit of Charlotte's global significance and have evolved from leaders in their respective cultural communities to become leaders of the Charlotte community at large. This year's honorees make sure that vulnerable students feel welcome every day. And when the pandemic turned school and after school programs upside down, she and her team found a fantastic way to bring meals and programming to students at home. So I would really like to invite Syl Gonzo to this virtual stage to tell us how she moved her team into action to make sure that the immigrant and refugee students and families of our bridge were not left behind because of the COVID pandemic. You're doing great work and thank you for being recognized. So please, Syl, speak to our community today. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, First of all, congratulations to all winners. It's really exciting to be here today. Um, yeah, the Global Leader Award was given since 2012 to individuals who embody the spirit of Charlotte's global significance and those who cultivate awareness of the growing diversity in the city. And I am so proud to be a recipient today, right here. Um, yes, Charlotte is a global, growing global city indeed. With my work as Executive Director of Outreach for Kids, a community center organization that fosters the education, acculturation, and resilience of refugee and immigrant children and their families, I get to talk about it daily. Did you know that last year there were 187 countries represented within our public school district? That's almost 96% of the countries in the world. Another point proving the global significance of Charlotte is that the number of English language learner students grew by 62% since 2012. And there are over 47,000 children who speak another language other than English at home. We are truly fortunate to live in such a diverse city. Through the COVID pandemic, our staff um, pivoted, I love that word, uh, pivoted from after school to um, 
Monday through Sunday, morning to night, um, distributing food throughout the city of Charlotte. We knew that our families were losing their jobs, um, you know, overnight. 80% of our families have lost at least 80% 80 uh, 80 of the families lost at least one source of income um, by early April last year. And what they told us is that they were concerned about how they will put food on the table for the kids who were now all day at home. So we um, coordinated about 50 different partnerships between foundations, corporations, uh, faith-based, and um, refugee and immigrant-owned restaurants and provided 140,000 meals throughout the city of Charlotte. We're super proud of the work. And then we became a full day learning site and now we're back into the after school world. So it's been quite a year. Um, I'd love to take this opportunity um, to encourage our leaders and the greater community to, in addition to celebrating the diversity and the colors and the flavors of our amazing multicultural population, to also recognize tangible part that all immigrants playing the ability of the city to grow. We would love to see um, every newcomer neighbor being valued before their potential economic contribution or the legal status, um, ensuring the basic needs are met for, in order for our kids to go to school and not have to worry about if they're gonna be eating that day. I love to shout out to all my colleagues, friends, elected officials, and courageous activists who are also working for a better future for immigrants and the refugee neighbors, especially those who throughout the COVID-19 pandemic were out, of, were out there every day under the scorching heat and under the pouring rain ensuring the families receive food, care packages, prevention packages, masks, and in so many other efforts that literally meant the difference between life and death. I am including, of course, our incredible staff at Our Bridge. I am thankful for the recognition, um, and I feel encouraged to continue working towards inclusion and equity for our families in and with this city. Still, um, I want to thank you for a few things. Thank you for challenging us to do more to support our immigrant and refugee communities. Thank you for caring so much and having the passion to make sure that you create that bridge, our bridge, to make those connections in a better and more conscientious way that moves us forward. And thank you for helping us raise our children. That makes all the difference. Sometimes I think that um, we, we as adults, um, we've done our part, but teaching the next generation makes a real difference. So this recognition is about all of that thank you um, for you and your organization. It was really delightful to learn about all the hard work and dedication of our honorees during the networking portion I hope that you all make the time to congratulate them. Mayor, I want to thank you for making the time to virtually pass our awards today. It's really great working with you again. Thank you. You know, Sherman, um, this is a gift to me. Um, I wish that I could be out everywhere, but the opportunity to see people doing significant change, making this a better place to live for everyone, these businesses, these nonprofits, the contributions of, to this community are great. So I hope next year everybody gets vaccinated and we can gather in person again soon. But for now, I can only say, please stay, mingle, tell, let people know that they're making a difference because they are. Thank you very much for attending this.